What is up? Welcome to the Stack Guy Show, episode number 23. Uh, joining me tonight is Manny Alvarez. How you doing, sir? Hell yeah, buddy. Thanks for having me. Doing good. Hell yeah, man. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Hell yeah, man. I know I was asking you a little bit earlier. Do uh, you want to tell a story of what happened to your arm there? Uh, <laughs> so, a couple weeks ago, I was having a good time and having a good time. <laughs> and something happened where my thumb folded all the way back. And it hurt like hell, and I just blew it off. And then a couple weeks later, it still hurt like hell, and I finally went to the doctor, and it was broken. So then I got a cast. But at least the modern-day cast is a lot better than the olden days. Here you get to pop it off, and I could take it off to take a shower. So That's awesome. At least, but, yeah, I got stuck for five weeks with this shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> and today's your, today's your birthday, I heard, so happy birthday to you. Thank you. How are you celebrating? You going to go and get drunk tonight? No, <laughs> I actually had my daughter skip school and hang out with me all day, and we we just went around and had lunch and goofed nice, off. Nice man, that's awesome. Yep, it's a good cool, day. cool. Hey, hey, man, I want to get I want to get right into it. Um, yeah. and I want to kind of go back. Okay, so before you started racing more recently on Street Outlaws, I used to see you all the time on Street Outlaws back in the day. Okay, and all I remember, I didn't even know your name at first, but I just remember you being the the one guy, and it was genius like advertising. I don't know if you did it on purpose. I was like, everybody always has black shirts, except there's this one guy who was always up there with the blue HP t-shirt. Yeah. So talk about how you first were like in the background or what you were doing on Street Outlaws way back in the day. So I guess uh, way back, I used to see Doc at no prep races that were not televised races, just random races. You know, I'd, I'd be helping with the Mustang that I used to tune and I would see him out there, you know, the whole talk with Doc is when are you going to switch the turbo or switch the supercharger, you know, get them off the nitrous. So I would tell him all the time, hey, man, let's switch your car to turbo. Let's switch it to turbo. And he would just laugh it off and say no and say no. And then finally he's like, man, I'd like you to tune my car, but I don't want to go turbo. He's like, will you mess with the nitrous? And I was like, yeah. You know, so then I just started helping him. And then actually, I think then later that year, I was at PRI and – Monza and a good friend of mine, Wendell, from Mr. Wendell's, was walking down the hallway, and we ran into him, and Wendell asked me, he's like, what do you think he should go with? And I was like, man, there's no question, turbo. And Monza's answer was, man, I don't know anything about a turbo. And Wendell was like, well, he does. And he asked, will you help me? And I was like, absolutely. And, man, from there, we just ran off with it, and we converted his car to twin turbo, fuel tech, you know, the works, tuned it, and pretty sure the very first time we went to go test, it made, he went a personal best, you know, faster than the he had ever been on nitrous. And we had a pretty decent season that first year. And, you know, he, he likes to keep it in his family with Brandon, and he wanted Brandon to do it. And so after that first year, you know, I just handed it over and, he took over from there, and then I had, you know, the other car I was work. I had a few other cars I was working with, and but one was my main focus, and then, you know, that relationship kind of went away after a while, and then at one point I, I mentioned to him, I was like, man, I think I'm gonna drive, and the last words he told me was, oh, we'll see how that works out for you. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, we're gonna see then. <laughs> yeah uh motivation right there yep <laughs> uh so what um was the four as far as street outlaws goes was the 405 show this year the first time we've seen you on street outlaws driving yes okay i yes. thought so um talk about talk about that man so you're 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 fine you've been on the, on the show in the background forever now you finally get to drive on the show how did you get how did you get it? You were you were a team captain. HPP was a team um, during the 405 show this season. How did that come about? So, you know, when I worked with the 405, man, I traveled with those guys. You know, I was working with Monza and and Doc. And, I, golly, we traveled to California all over the place. I became pretty friendly with all of them. I consider them all my friends, good friends. And, you know, when we did the, the Daily Driver show, I let a lot of them borrow my customers' cars and, you know, was, they knew they know that our shop is primarily known for fast street cars. Mm -hmm. And I think I guess Murder Nova, Ryan, Reaper, 
I think it was those three, you know, putting together the the captains for the teams that they wanted to race against. And then they reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to put together a team. And I was like, hell yeah, I do. And so then at that point, I have a lot of customers' cars that are fast and, and good street cars, but I didn't want to make it all about like me and HPP. You know, I was thinking it was more like a Texas thing. So then I found people from South Texas, West Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, you know, wherever, whatever was going to be a good team that was going to give us the best chance of winning. And we did, we did good. We were, golly, like two or three small things changing. We would have won. Yeah. The one guy who pushed through the brakes on the starting line, the one truck, the first truck that gave Dave the hit, he blew a charge pipe in the burnout. So then he looked bad, you know, just, Dave was talking shit that he should have given the other guy the hit, but it was the guy's charge bike blew off. So yeah, the word uh, the the common theme throughout the season was, um, and it, I know it's hard to do when you just give out like talk about the rules they gave you because it seemed like there was very few rules, which kind of left a lot of gray area for some yeah. some guys and some cars. So I was told no funny car cage, twenty eight ten five tires, full interior, and. You know what a race car is. Don't bring race cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's like so left to like so much interpretation. Oh yeah. But then yes, <laughs> you know, all their cars are fuel tech with traction control, you know, oh, turbo yeah. four hundred. Most of our cars were like overdrive eight speeds and six speeds and like they were for real street cars. Yeah. Now theirs, yes, they can drive them on the street and they do the same thing. But I don't know, there's a difference in to me like a real legit comfortable street car, you know, where you yeah. got AC and stereo and, and it hauls ass or a mm -hmm. race car that can be driven on the street. Yeah. And you can yeah, put no. things on the rules. We saw you with a truck, your truck. How long have you had that truck, man? <laughs> so it actually is not mine. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it was cool as hell and it made me want to get one. <laughs> so I'm in the market for a four wheel drive F-150. We've built a couple of them. We've done a couple of them. That one was actually one of Manuel's customers, okay. and he let me borrow it, and it's a badass truck, man. Yeah. <laughs> it, so, yeah. it literally drives like a stock truck when you take it on the cruise. So I, the first time I laid my eyes on it was at the driver's meeting when they showed up, <laughs> and uh, I drove it through the cruise, and it, it drives like a stock truck, like absolutely great, and then I didn't even know how to stage it or anything. And they didn't even think about this till like 10 minutes before my first race. They're like, oh shit, we gotta show you how to stage this thing. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, is it complicated? And they're like, a little bit. Oh, wow. So you have a, a two-step button on the steering wheel, a scramble button over here. Then you have to get on the foot brake and give it, you can't give it all the gas. You gotta just like slowly work the gas till you get to a certain boost. And then it'll get on the two-step. You can't give it too much gas because then it'll build too much boost. <laughs> and then you have to release the two-step and the trend and the, the foot brake at the same time and floor it all together at the same time. So that first race against Damon, I probably didn't do it perfect. But like I literally learned about it 10 minutes before that race. Nice. And when I raced Asian, I had it a little bit more down. Yeah. It was actually one of the fastest passes of the night. I don't know if we're supposed to say times or not, but it was well into the fives. Nice. It was freaking great. And then when I showed uh I showed Sean and Dave, because I don't care, you know, I'm I'm friends with those guys. I showed them the draggy. And next thing you know, Sean has an F one fifty. Everybody's in the market for an F one fifty. that's awesome. That's awesome. And then you guys, uh you how did they approach you about Street Wars? Um did they just say we want you to come and invite another person on your team or how'd that go? So uh I think each team that, that went got to pick two of their best cars, you know, to uh to come back for the street wars. Yeah. And then so that's what that's where the, the truck got sideways. So there was we were gonna bring back the silver truck and the orange truck. Then they put nitrous on the orange truck like the night before. And they told me I was gonna drive the orange truck. And then mm -hmm. they're sending me draggies all night. And it's going faster and faster and, fa and way faster than what I was driving. And I'm like, yeah. hell yeah, I'm winning this shit. <laughs> and then when we get there, they're like, oh, no, the owner wants to drive it. 
I was like, shit. <laughs> so then I'm back in the silver truck. So then in my head, I'm thinking, well, if the orange truck can handle nitrous out of the hole, I'm going to get on the scramble out of the hole. Yeah. So I drop Chuck, which is one of the faster cars. Yeah. And I'm thinking he's probably going to treat me because he's, he's going off a trans brake. I'm going off a foot brake and a button on the steering wheel. So then uh, I'm thinking he's going to treat me. So I let go of the, the two-step, floor it, and immediately grab the scramble, which is definitely <laughs> not the right decision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sent that truck sideways, which was an interesting feeling. I've never been so sideways in a four-wheel drive vehicle. Yeah. It's totally different than like a Mustang or something. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. Uh, I wish I had just ran my normal pass. I think I would have won if I just ran the same pass I ran against Asian. And then I would have had a solid chance of winning the whole thing because I know the times the winner ran, and I was several tenths faster than that. Yeah. Yeah, no, you guys are flying for sure. Um, so I, obviously you've been around all the a lot of filming of the 405 shows, especially the old ones. How was this one different? Like, was this feeling different with everybody? How how was it then? Both are extremely cool when you're there. Like, I remember my first few shows with them on big tires, and man, it's imp- you can't even even imagine what it's like to see those big tire cars go on a regular street and throw down these low four second passes. It's it's so impressive, and like your head tells you it can't happen, and then you see it happen. It's like damn. Yeah. But those are very stressful nights. Everybody's kind of at each other's throats and so stressed about losing a spot on the list or, you know, this or that. And where this night was like just a bunch of friends having fun street racing. Nice. It, was, it was probably one of the coolest nights we've done. Cool, man. Um, yeah, you could you could tell. And everybody I've talked to from the 405 since then is, that, you know, it was it was like a nice change up. Yeah, so they back and everybody having a good time, you know, bullshitting together and yeah. talking to each other about their combinations and what works better and what have you tried. And, right. Instead of just being at each other's throats. Right. <laughs> exactly. It was in, especially the last two seasons when they were just, it was all qualifying for America's List. So yeah. <laughs> that was even more intense than yeah, I, remember that. I remember like the very first time they did that. And, uh, I was helping Doc when we were in Nebraska. Yeah. When Doc wrecked. When he wrecked, yeah. Man, man I remember him calling me. And he's like, "Man, I need you over here." He's like, "Like, I have to get in on this." And it, it, he felt it, he felt like it was like life and death to him. Mm-hmm. And we spent a lot of time testing on the street, and we got the car working good. And then he drew Chief, and I I remember he said something to Chief, and then Chief was like you will never beat me. And then Doc said something about he he has beat him before. And then Chief pointed at his car and he says, that car will never beat that car. And then Doc just had it in his head, you know, like he was not going to lift. He was out in front of him and he was not going to lift. He was like on a three-foot wheelie, driving left. In the grass, yeah. stayed in it. And then once that tire got in the grass, it just yeah, really bad. And man, that was, that was honestly one of my scariest times you know, run the whole eighth mile, get there, and he was, he was knocked out. Like, yeah, old. His Bobby, you know, freaking is over there in the trees throwing up because he doesn't know if his brother's even alive. Right. It took him like two, three real minutes before he woke up. He had no mm-hmm. idea where he was. That was that was a bad deal. Yeah. It shows, yeah, was- like what you said. You know, the stress and like. He couldn't take the loss, so he just pushed it way more. Right. Than have. Yep. No, and we saw that two years in a row with with Lust did that too. You know, that's like that was the, the America's List qualifying. They wanted to be on that so bad. So it was like you said, it was nice to see a change up, more more relaxed, yeah, like that. Cool, having a good time. Um. So if there's any more, did you have fun street racing? Is there is there if there's any more street all loss street races in the future? You're gonna be try to be a part of it. Hell yeah. I want to be a part of all of them. If, if I can qualify or figure out how to get an American's list or any more of these streetcar shows, I'm I'm down for all of them. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, man. And then uh, I still have this flip bumper Camaro. And one of my buddies is going to be, you know, 
I sold it to him, but with the, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you build it. I'm going to help you tune it. So we took the, we took the 572 out of that car and we're just putting a, a fast times LS in it and with twin 76s and it's going to be a dedicated small tire car. Nice. So we'll have a, a good small tire car if, if the race calls for it. Right. Yeah. And it seems like it's going that way. So I'm sure there'll be some, definitely a few shows, if not more. Yeah. I went and did a, it hasn't aired yet, but I went and did the, the California mega cash days. Oh, you did that one. Nice. I borrowed a, a car from a guy down in Brownsville. <laughs> I'm, not some borrowing everything, but I had a, a borrowed car from someone I met when we did Fastest in America down in Brownsville. I met a couple dudes down there, and, and one of them was like, man, take my Camaro. And it was, a, it was actually a radio versus the world car, almost 600 cubic inch, twin 98s, you know, tight front end. It really had never been street raced, had never been on no prep. Like, it was not a street race car by any means i had several people tell me don't bother taking that car because it's not going to work on the street right and then it was like all right challenge accepted <laughs> yeah. and actually it was pretty good until yeah. I, uh, the freaking belt popped off the fuel pump uh -huh. like i had my first race the the first race night for me if you win two races you're done you know yeah. and then you advance to the next round i won my first one and then i went on to the second one and i I feel like I had it won, and then the fuel pump belt popped off and the car shut off. So then, yeah. went over the loser bracket. I don't want to give anything away. If no, it comes out, but went over the loser bracket and drew one of the fastest guys as well. And it's close to the end. It was the end of my night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you have fun though, right? Yes, sir. It was. Yeah, man. That's good. Um, that was interesting, right there. It was. It was asphalt. Crappy asphalt. So you know, even the the OG small tire street racers that race all over the place that were like, oh, we're gonna mess all these street outlaw guys up. Even they were having trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do a, you launch and it just rips up the freaking asphalt. Wow. Well, that'll be a good show when they when that airs too. Yep. Forgot that. I I forgot. Yeah, I, I knew you were in that. I totally forgot about that. Um. Uh, let's, switch, let's switch gears to No Prep Kings, man. Um, so for people who don't know, um, you ran Futures last year, No yeah. Prep Kings. Um, so, and you have a beautiful car, by the way. Um, what is your car and what is, from what I've heard, you got some nice stuff under the hood. What's under the hood of that car? So it's got a Steve Morris 572 481X, a Hartz 140 millimeter turbo, uh, all vibrant components, you know, that we use to build the turbo kit. And... We probably run 40 to 45 pounds of boost on a on a normal pass. And she she rocks, man. She, she bad. Hell yeah. <laughs> it it Hell was yeah. interesting getting in that thing. So the last time I drove a like a a fast car was a long time ago. <laughs> you know, probably like yeah. eight or ten years ago. So it was interesting, you know, jumping in there and and like I guess I didn't, I didn't want to baby it, you know. It was just like, I'm going to put a fast tune-up in it, and I'm going to let go of the button and see what happens. And uh -huh. That first pass was interesting, but right after that, man, I, I got it pretty quick. And now, like, within – once it started going good, man, I feel so comfortable. And I, like, it feels mine. I feel comfortable in it. I'm not nervous when I go make a pass. Hell, even when I was in the final round, I, I wasn't nervous. It's weird because when I used to race – I used to race X275 a long time ago, and when I got into eliminations – I would get more nervous, but nowadays I don't. I don't know. Like I get in that car and I was just totally comfortable. It was just another pass, you know, right. not stressing about what the other guys doing. I love it. Cool Way man. Now, I don't know. I guess it comes with age with this gray hair. <laughs> uh, and you made so you made your deb debut last year in the future class. How many, how many races did you go to last year? Did so you we have? showed up at the Tulsa race. Okay. So and that was a super yeah. sad race. That's where we did the reveal. And then, you know, we had the problems with the production. Yeah. And then, uh, we ran there. We ran the next few with troubles. So, like, it was a mad thrash to get the car running. And I, I, I think a little bit of it's my fault. You know, I just, 
as soon as it ran, it was like, all right, let's go to the next race. And it really wasn't very tested and it, it really wasn't ready to go race at an event like that. Yeah. But I was so anxious to get there and do it. Right. So then, uh, we fought some new car blues in Tulsa in the first two or three races. We actually had something that I hadn't ever seen happen before, but the fuel filter collapsed. And when it collapsed, the ends of it are rubber. The little rubber chunks went through the whole fuel system. And I was getting little rubber chunks in all the injectors. So oh, randomly, I would lose one cylinder or lose another cylinder and I had no idea what's going on. And, you know, like, man, like I said, the 405 guys, those guys are probably, you know, some of my best friends, you know, Chuck Seitzinger. He's like, man, my trailer's over here. Grab anything you need. Murder Nova. You need injectors? Here's a full set of injectors, you know, whatever, whatever I needed. And I was chasing my tail a little bit, you know, changing injectors, changing this. And I put a brand new set of injectors in it and then I'd trash one of those, you know, because there was just all sorts of rubber going through the fuel system. I think it was in Phoenix when we finally, I, you know, I, I have to work all week. So I fly home after each race and then Cody, which owns the car, you know, would be at the, at driving from one race to another. So I'd fly home, and then when I would come back, this time I was like, man, we're bringing everything with us, new fuel filter, everything. We're stripping this whole fuel system completely apart. We're flushing it completely out. And then that's when we found the filter and all the okay. things. And then from that point on, everything got really good. Once we got a handle on the car, I had one win, one runner-up, and two semifinals, like nice. the next four races. Yeah. It was, you know, it was a good time from there and I that's when I felt like super comfortable in it and I, I feel like I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Um when were you I, I guess I don't even know this. Were you were you guys allowed to do from the future class? Were you guys allowed to enter in the big tire outlaw class too? Yes. Okay. Did you race in any of those? Honestly I don't think so because uh or I might have entered one but like you basically, the only way you enter that is if you lose in the first round. So those first few races where we were struggling, we were losing in the first round, right. but we knew there was a problem with the car. So then it was like, no sense in just going in there with a problematic car. Right. What was, there was one race that's awesome and it's going to stand out in my head probably forever. So uh, I think we missed Colorado. And I talked to Sam and I was like, you know, I really want to be at every race but I feel like I'm chasing my tail and I'm not doing myself any good being here, you know, without a good running car. So I want to miss the next race. And he's like, miss it, do what you need to do. So I stayed home, went and tested, 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 got the car in the threes, running solid, was super psyched with it. And then we went to, I think the next one was North Carolina. And I always try and grudge race with the fastest guys I can, I can find anywhere yeah. in the top of the points. So find Disco Dean, and he wants a grudge. It's super cold out, and uh, we raced the first one. I actually walked the track, rewind a little bit. I walked the track every time before anybody runs. And around 300 feet, I feel the track gets real sticky. So they scraped only the first 300, and after that, it was good. Oh. Um, shit, this is way better than what I tested on. So then I go into my tune-up. And I figure around what time I'm going to be at 300 feet, and I ramp in a whole bunch of extra boost in. So I'm, I'm psyched, go up there, make the hit, and around 300 feet, the front end starts powering up. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> there we go. I would have stayed in it, but it started driving right, so then I aborted. And after I aborted, then Dean drives by me. So I was like, shit, I had him. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, and I'm like, man, will you do it one more time? You know, I had to, I had to pedal. And he says, uh, this is going to cost you money the next time. <laughs> and I was like, all right, we'll put a little money on it. <laughs> so we put some money on it. And then I go back to my pit and I'm thinking, okay, do I add weight to the nose? Or do I take power away? Yeah. And it goes back to my old radial racing days. Put some more weight on the nose and throw it at it. Yeah. Literally 27 pounds. Kayla Morton, let me borrow 27 pounds. Put it on the front end of the car, and next pass, it goes straight down. Money race, trium, out in front of him the whole time. We get to the end, he's like, man, I had no idea that car was that fast. 
Nice. Man, I told you, bro. <laughs> so from that <laughs> so usually Friday night the track is better. Yeah. And, uh, Saturday, you know, during the day the track's not as good as it was Friday night, so you gotta turn them down a little bit. Yep. So then the, I guess this is where I was getting to. So then uh the ladies that do the the outlaw outlaw big tire are the same ladies that did future. So then when we're doing the future drivers meeting. She comes up and uh, she says, uh, okay, so we're running a little behind. We're not gonna have time. If you lose in the first round, you're not gonna have time to come back and tell me you wanna enter Outlaw Big Tire. So just tell me now, if you lose in the first round, are you gonna wanna go into Outlaw Big Tire? So then everybody's like, okay, cool. So she goes to the first person, you know, if you lose, do you wanna go in? Yes, if you, yes, yes, yes. And it comes to me. And I don't know, I was feeling cocky. I was feeling on top of the world because I had good test session. And <laughs> then she comes to me and I was like, I'm not going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, okay, but in the event that you do, and I was like, I'm not going to lose. Just move on. <laughs> and then everyone, I'm sure everybody's looking at me like I'm a dick. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so then uh, we draw and I draw the buy. <laughs> Everybody's looking at me like that's the last person that needed to buy. <laughs> right. So then uh, uh, the next day, I figure I'm gonna leave the same tune up that I ran against Dean. If it takes that, I was like, I'm, I'm in. So that next morning, I'm one of the first ones run that pass. It goes straight down the track. I still remember I was celebrating when it went through the beams, like like I won the race already, and it was just a first round buy. <laughs> like I knew at that moment. There wasn't anybody there that was going to touch that car. Yeah. And sure as shit, like, went all rounds, and that was the race I won. Like, nice. That car just went straight down every time. Hell yeah, man. That's awesome. Um, when you were there, now, when you were there, you were not, you were not like, on anybody's team, right? Because I know some of the guys, some of the, even the future guys, sometimes they're kind of involved with other teams. You just went on your own, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm friends with Mike Murillo and Birdman. I'm also friends with, you know, Cody Baker and a lot of people that were in Team South. And then I'm friends with a lot of the 405 guys. Mm -hmm. I was, like, very, like, not sure what to do. Yeah. And honestly, like, when I'm at those races, like, a lot of my good friends, you know, are from the 405 because I, I spent a lot of time racing with those guys. Right. And typically, like, when something, if I needed something or if they needed something, that's usually where I went. Yeah. So it's kind of odd. And... Some of them are, you know, super cool. And then some of them have that little feeling in their head, like, like I'm a spy or something, you know, because I'm from Texas. It's like, mm -hmm. man, I could be friends, you know, with Texas and 405. And it's, it's all good. I want, I, want, I want you all to succeed. You know, whoever, you throw your best pass down, you throw your best pass down, who wins? Congratulations. Right. Yeah. I'm getting um, into bickering. Yeah, no, I know. And it, it seems like, I know, the, the TV show really tries to sell teams. And it's yeah. like all these guys help each other out no matter what, usually. Yeah. So um, so let's talk about this year, Go Prep Kings. Um, after your good season of futures, what are your expectations going into this year? Man, I want to go in and kick some ass. Like, I feel like our car runs with the top guys. I feel like I'm ready. I, one of the things we do each time is we film the tree. And, you know, back when I used to race X275, I was always racing with a 4.6 liter, you know, mod motor, Mustang motor. Back then, they were considered turds. And then I was racing people with real motors. So then I had to, I had to cut a light. So that's something that's very important to me. And pretty much almost everybody I've raced, I've treed. And then the car, you know, is there running with the top guys. I feel mm -hmm. like I have a solid chance. You know, and I don't want to say the champ. I'd, I'd like to say a solid chance at the championship, but of course, it doesn't even sound right when you say that when you're not in there running. Yeah, but I'd like to make a top five. You know, and of course, push for better than that. But I really would like to be top five. Nice. Um, and obviously, you you've seen the rules. The new rules come out. How you run a single turbo? So how did you get affected by the rules for this year? I got fifty pounds put on me, which is a little weird. Uh, yeah. Really, I don't, I don't even know if a single turbo car has made it to the semifinals in the Invitational. Like, 
Bird, like really the only two was Birdman and Larson. Will Hoyt ran it for a little while, but nobody got a handle on it. Nobody did anything successful with it. I, I don't even understand how they got 50 pounds put on them, but it is what it is. I was 120 pounds overweight last year. So if I can get down to legal weight, I'm still down 70 from where I was last year. And mm -hmm. I don't feel like I was tapped out. So I'll keep working at it and do what I can. I, I really want to be the first one to run an NPK race with a single turbo. And yeah. I've had people tell me like, man, you should switch, you know, a pro charger is easier. And yes, a pro charger is way easier. You just have a little timing check to deal with and that's it. But I, I like challenge, you know, it's like challenge accepted. I would yeah. want to be the first one to win with a single turbo. Oh yeah. Um, and then you're, you're not a uh, stranger to the 34 and a half inch tire, which is that's another year. All year, so it's perfect for us. <laughs> now everybody else has to run on the same tire as us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so when do you hope to get testing, get out testing, get ready for so the season? Right now, all we have left to do, we have a fresh bullet in it. All we have left to do is build a, a titanium transmission tunnel. I'm waiting for some carbon bars to show up. And then we're ready to test probably very early May. And I've already talked to a couple of local tracks here and I told them like, I might need to spend the night there and like test for two days in a row, but whatever we need to do, we're going to do it. And I want to leave there with ET. Like I talked to one of the track owners and I was like, man, I want you to prep one lane, pro mod prep, one lane with nothing, just scrape it. Yeah. And I want to go as fast as I can here and I want to go as fast as I can here. So I know what I need to do because you know, when I'm just doing futures for six or seven races that I went to, the tracks are so different. You know, when we went to Alabama last year, that track, they had just run a radial race and you couldn't mess that track up. Like it was, it was like it was prepped, but it wasn't prepped. Mm -hmm. It's just, it was just so much good foundation on that track. You couldn't mess it up. Mm -hmm. so you need to be ready. You know, a lot of people then at that point go into tire, including ourselves, the first couple passes we had, we went into tire shake and, you know, we had to figure it out and, Actually, that's another funny story because I stroke. I had, I had raced uh, Marty Robertson in the Bad Fish a mm -hmm. couple of times, and he had won a few races before I showed up. And you know, we had raced a couple of times, and uh, I had beat him twice in a row. And then he did really good. He had Frankie Taylor there with him, which is you know very familiar with a good prep track and a screw blow car. And they got they had that car flying when the track was really good and I struggled all, all night Friday and then I drew him first round and he's like, all right, I got you this time. He's like, I saw you last night <laughs> and we threw our Hail Mary at it and it worked. And then I beat him again. He was like, ah, <laughs> nice. Hell yeah. That was good. Yeah. You got to throw some shit at it on those big tires. When it, when you, when you have a sticky track, I even talked to Ryan and man, he, I was like, you know what? On a track like this, what are you doing to your timing check? He's like, there is no timing check. He's like, I'm giving it all to it as soon as I let go of the button. <laughs> it's crazy because those things make, you know, 45 pounds of boost as soon as you let go of the button. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. Um, so so being the future guy from last year, now, if if the – I'm sure you heard of the new – possible new No Prep Kings format coming up this year. How – if they do do teams and the draft and all that stuff – how do you think that'll affect you or other future guys? Like what, what do you think will happen there? Man, it, there is some guys in the future that have really fast cars. If they make it a completely open pool, I imagine some people in the future will get picked before some people that were previously in the invitational. Nice. I, don't, I you know, nobody knows how big that pool is going to be. If it's just going right. to be the guys that were in the invitational before or the, some of the futures and then they get to pick it's it's going to be super interesting and super cool and i imagine they'll probably make a whole episode out of just the the old <laughs> four yard pick you know, oh yeah <laughs> i just hope i'm not the last one standing there just falling on someone's team by default <laughs> yeah no. <laughs> no. I know that's why I keep posting the stats from the last year just to make people get a little nervous about yeah, their, their 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 standings. Problem. All the captains are going to have them in their pocket, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did this guy do last year? Uh, that's funny. No, you're right. It's going to be like nobody wants to be the last one picked, right? Nobody sure. wants 
no, you're the one that knocked it there. Super helpful for them, for the captains. Yeah, and I'm sure everybody wants. I'm sure anybody they everybody would want to be on Ryan Martin's team. I'm sure. <laughs> for sure, but I mean, there's there's some good captains, and I mean, it's all going to come down to your team. You know, it's gonna it's gonna require the whole team, from what I understand, to to perform. You know, one yeah. person is not going to be able to carry the team. Right. No, it's from what I've heard, it's a real team championship. Yeah, real yeah. team points and everything. Um, Manny, if you want right now, we're going to take some questions from people who are watching. Sweet. Um, while we're waiting, I'm going to play a little, uh, 30 second clip. Um, and if you want to, can you see the, you can see the comments, right? Or no, should be to the, should be able to click them. Should be to the right, maybe. Or below. Um, oh, yeah, I had it on private chat so I couldn't see him, but now I see him. Okay, so if you got if anybody got any questions, post them in the chat box there. Manny will look at it and I'll look at it. <laughs> I see old old Dave Comstock on there. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was on there earlier. Yeah, all right, I know you would have. I don't know what he was talking about there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play a video for any and all no prep racing news, not just street outlaws. Go to noprep.com or the no prep racing page on Facebook. This is the number one source for all things no prep, so be sure to check it out. Are you looking for a quick access firearm storage system that has a variety of access control levels based on your needs? Well, head on over to doorgunnerusa.com, a family owned business who makes their products 100% right here in the USA. I also want to give a special shout out to, uh, I'm terrible with pronunciation, but his name is Johnny Nogas. He runs the Street Outlaws Australia private Facebook page. Um, it blew up with, with the No Prep Team guys going over Australia, and they have all kinds of Australian races on there. They have the, the U.S. stuff on there. Um, it's an awesome private page. It's called Street Outlaws Australia. Check that out if you can. Uh, Manny, do you got any sponsors or any partners that you want to shout out right now? Definitely. This man right here, Steve Morris, man, I can't thank him enough. He, he builds a badass engine for us. The fact that we can put that engine in, Put it in the car, go test, and we usually get 50 pass. We, we put about 50 passes on it. Really never have any. You hear about all these people having valve train issues, lifters, push rods, this, that, and then never have any problems out of his engine. We literally check lap. Like you see some people, you know, going over the engine every single pass. We check lash on Friday when we get there. If it's good, roll it the whole weekend. You know, put 50 passes on it, send it back to him. He puts rods in it. And he sent me pictures when he pulls it apart. He pulls the head completely apart. Every valve, every freaking valve guide, checks everything with a fine tooth and comb. So when it gets back, I know it's going to be perfect. And then, you know, everything on the car from the Pro Torque converter, the Rossler transmission, Fuel Tech, the Merlot rear end. I feel like we have all the best components you can possibly get. You know, as far as reliability, we really, I haven't broken up. I've never broken a roster transmission. And from when we were running it in the split bumper Camaro to this car, we put hundreds of passes on it and they just don't break. And, you know, same thing with the, the converter with Joe, with Pro Torque, man. Like, you tell them what you want, you get it. And if for some reason it's not perfect, it'll overnight to a stator and, you know, you're, you're in there. I'm very thankful to all the people that have helped us, you know, get where we are and really couldn't do it without them, honestly. And, yeah. you know, for this car, the car that I drive, the Blue Angel car, you know, when I was working with the last guy I was working with, this was all a plan, you know, to have two Mustangs, you know, one for the street, one for the track. We had a guy named Cody Sanders from Cody Cattle Company who, who came on board with us. And he, he wanted us to succeed. And he's the one that is kind of the, the bang man behind the Blue Angel car. You know, he he travels with the car. He takes it all over the place. He, you know, he told me, he's like, man, let's do this. You build it how you want. You drive it or you find a driver. And let's go, let's go win a championship. Nice. And, and he's, he's done solid, man. Cool. Hell yeah. Um, you're now you you have your own Facebook page, right, Manny? And then I know there's Blue Angel Racing. 
Is that another one too? Yeah, it just started here recently. We didn't even know what we were going to name the car until we revealed it. And then, so kind of a little side story, but, uh, you know, when I was in Brownsville filming Fastest in America, about two or three minutes right before we made a pass, I got a phone call that one of my really good friends had passed away, which was super hard on me. And then, uh, you know, when we went to go reveal the car, again, you know, we had somebody pass away and it just, it just seemed fitting. You know, then we did a fan vote for the name for the car and someone recommended Blue Angel. And I was like, man, that seems so fitting, you know, so then I got, yeah. I got them riding with me all the time. Nice. That's cool, man. That's real cool. I'm going to check out some questions here. Um, Tim Menza has one. It says, any thoughts on switching from a 41X to a FMX? We thought about doing it just for, like, fun's sake and, you know, putting a radiator on. We thought about, like, driving the car to the staging lanes and driving it back. Now we even thought about putting a push bar in the front of the car and pushing our competition up to the lanes with us. You know, just to – just to make TV and do something cool. But with how tight the competition is, I really can't afford the extra weight. So we just stick with the drive block for now. Yeah. He's cool with it. You know, he will still use like all the SMX components, but just with no water. Nice. I see someone asking about uh, if we're a fan of the on three for the Coyotes, uh, Rick, Rick Dwyer, Dwyer. Man, I use them all the time on the trucks, the Mustangs. Some people talk crap about them, you know, but I've known Chad, the owner for years, and he does a good job. He's put in the work to make sure he gets a good product. He actually cares. And I have great, I have so many cars over a thousand rear wheel, which is his base kit. I would recommend it. I see Dave's on there talking about his Monte Carlo. So uh, that's another yeah. funny story. So last week, I guess two weeks ago they had the radio roundup over here in Texas and Dave was in town with his with Goliath on on radials and he brought the Monty as well and Wheeler was going to drive the the Monty but then uh, it turned out they had more work than they needed to do you know than they than they had time you know to yeah. mess around with the Monty and I was there and he's like man you want to drive it I was like hell yeah I want to drive it so then I drove the Monte Carlo there in True Street He's got a badass Monte Carlo, man. It's Pro Charger, F1X, true street car, comfortable AC. We did a 20 mile cruise. You you can feel like you can cruise that thing anywhere. And yeah. then we ripped on the highway. I was like, damn. And it runs really good. And I begged him when, it, when we were done. I was like, man, can you just leave it here in Dallas and let me race it a little bit? Because <laughs> he went back to New York for a month and he left it with me. and. Uh, I'm probably going to take it up there to, to Big March races next weekend and do the back of the track with it. Nice. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, Manny, what do you like to do when you aren't uh, racing or working on cars? Uh, so I got a beautiful little girl that plays soccer nice. and very competitive soccer. She's actually won a national championship. She plays on a pre-Olympic team. So it's like oh, I'm wow. part of two traveling circuses. You know, we travel the whole country with her soccer just the other day, we were in San Diego, North Carolina, all over the place with her. That's so awesome. Always traveling. But, you know, I like to hunt and, you know, all the good old stuff. Of course, mm -hmm. in the summer at the beach. But <laughs> 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 Nice. Uh, and then, for those who don't know, what, what do you do? What's your nine to five, Manny? So... I own and work at HPP Racing. I'm one of the owners at HPP Racing. And then I do all the tuning. So we have two chassis dynos in the shop. And typically Monday through Friday, I'm running back and forth between both dynos. They typically schedule three to four dyno tunes for me a day. And then uh, I'm literally just on the dyno all day long. I like to say nine to five, but it's probably more like ten to seven or ten to eight. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, Manny, uh, I want to say first off, please thank you for coming on the show, man. Hell yeah, um, appreciate it, man. Fan of yours, of course. And um, I wish you luck this year. Hope thank everything you. goes your way. I hope you get in the big show. 
hope if they do go that way, hope you get drafted and all that good stuff. But um, I'll be at that first race. Definitely come say hi to you, man. Yeah. See what's up. And thanks again for coming on. I appreciate you, bud. All right. Have a good night. All right.